Happy Rainbow Capitalism Awareness Month, everyone. Yes, it is once again that special time of year when our corporate overlords are like, look, we know that some of our past or present policies have been a wee bit discriminatory. And yes, on occasion, we sometimes donate to politicians and or organisations that advocate for the eradication of LGBT plus people. But have you considered that we've slapped a rainbow filter on our logo? So all is forgiven, right? Buy our merch and other shit that we've also slapped a rainbow on. Yes, happy Pride Month, everyone. And I'll try to keep the cynicism to a minimum for the rest of the video, but Today I want to share with you my pattern for mesh panel tops. The one thing that I've really come to like about this design is that you can make lots of different variations. There is this one here, then this one, and this one. And they're all made using the same basic pattern. Essentially what we're doing is crocheting squares and or rectangles and then sewing them together to create a top. The number of panels that you'll need to crochet for yourself is going to depend on what style of top you want to create. So for the ace top that I've got on right now, I crocheted a large front panel and a large back panel, and then I crocheted the sleeves directly off of those. The rainbow cardi was made by crocheting one large back panel and then two narrower front panels. And then once again, I sewed those together. I think this works. And then the cropped version of the top was made using five panels. The larger back panel, the two front panels, and then I also made a panel for each sleeve. Oh, why not? Gotta commit to the bit. <laughs> this is ridiculous. In the video, we'll be going through the process of crocheting the rainbow version, but I will include additional instructions so you could crochet yourself the other two as well. I'd like to add that I am still in the early stages of my crochet making journey, and this is only the second clothing tutorial I've ever made. That being said, I acknowledge there's probably a lot of room for improvement here, so if you have any constructive criticism or helpful suggestions, please make sure you put them down in the comments so it can help me improve on my clothing tutorials in the future. Before we jump into the pattern though, there is one important thing we need to do, and that is to take our body measurements. How many measurements you'll need will be determined by the kind of top or cardigan that you would like to make. I'm going to go through all of the measurements. So you will need to A, decide what kind of top you want to make, and then B, choose which measurements you will need to take for yourself. So decide that, then go and grab yourself a tape measure, something to take notes with, then come on back here, we will take those measurements and then we can get into this pattern. For a large back or front panel, we're going to measure from shoulder to shoulder. So grab your tape measure. You're going to start at one shoulder right at the very edge, place your tape measure there, pull it across all the way to the same point on your opposite shoulder and then drop that measurement down. For the narrower front panels, you're going to measure from the end of your shoulder to the point where you want your front panel to stop slash start. So we're going to measure from this point to about here. For the sleeve panels, you'll need two measurements. You'll need the circumference of your upper arm. So you're just going to measure up over your shoulder and then down, hang on, and then down under your armpit. And this can be made as wide as you like. So you're going to take that measurement on the side, you can see there. So we're going up and around and back down under our armpit. The second measurement for the sleeve that you'll need to take is the length. So start at the top of your shoulder, measure down to the point where you would like your sleeve to end. And that is the measurement you're going to write down for the length. As for the length of the panel pieces themselves, you'll measure from the top of your shoulder all the way down your body and stop at the point where you would like your cardigan to end. So like that. You don't strictly have to take this measurement. You can just crochet your top out until you reach a length that you're happy with. And then you'll need to take note of how many rows you did and repeat that in any of the other narrow or larger back panels that you're going to create for the top. So they all need to be the same. So they will match up when we sew the cardigan together. Now that we've taken all the necessary measurements, I would recommend that you double check those that you need, and then we'll dive straight in to crocheting this pattern.
We're going to try out the black background today because I'm using white as well as bright colors and I'm hoping the black will make them stand out a bit more. Uh, but let me know what you think because I haven't used the black background before. To begin here, we're going to grab our yarn, our hooks and our tape measure. I'm using this eight ply milk cotton yarn that I've had kicking around for ages and I think I got it on eBay. I'm going to be using that with a 3.5 millimeter hook. But because we're making this pattern to our specific measurements, you can make this top with any yarn weight and hook size that you like. Step one is to grab your measurement. We went over measurements in the intro, so I'm not going to cover that again here, but I'm going to be looking at doing a 25 centimeter wide piece because this is going to be for my front panel. After you've got that measurement, the next step is going to be to grab your yarn, your hook, and create a slip knot. And then we're going to begin chaining. The goal of this part is to chain to your desired length. So again, mine is about 25 centimeters. You also should keep track of how many chains you've done in this section, so just count as you go. When you've finished your chain, measure it so you can make sure that you're about the right length. So that is not inches, I don't do inches. So that is about right for me and I already know that because I've done this pattern before. Now that we've finished our chain and it's approximately the right length, we need to do a bit of tweaking because this final number of chains that we've ended up with needs to be able to be divided by four. That means you may need to add another couple of chains or remove a couple of chains. For example, I've got 48 chains here and that number 48 can be divided by four. When I was doing my prototype for this piece, I actually started with 50 chains. So that means after I had chained my original 50, I measured it, it was approximately the right length. I realized 50 cannot be divided by four, so I deducted two chains. It's going to be up to you whether you want to add chains or remove chains. Just think about what sort of fit you want for this top. But once you've done that, we can start crocheting. When you've chained an amount that can be divided by four, we're going to add an additional three chains. One, two, and three. This is our turning chain. And in this pattern, our turning chain is going to count as a stitch in the row. After we've chained those additional three, we're then going to work in the fifth chain from the hook. We're skipping the three chains we've just made as well as the fourth stitch, and then we're going to work into the fifth stitch. And in that fifth stitch, we're going to place a double crochet. This double crochet is going to be the second stitch in our row because our chain three counts as the first. We're going to continue working our way down the chain, doing double crochets, and the total that you should end up with is that original chain number that's divisible by four. In my case, I should end up with 48. I'll be doing 47 double crochets. My 48th stitch is that chain three we did at the end there. That is row one finished. And just to recap, the first stitch in this row should be that chain three. The rest are all double crochet. So I've got 47 double crochets plus my 48th, which is that chain three. To start row two, we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. Personally, I like to put a stitch marker in the third chain. And I just use this as a visual reminder for myself that I need to work into this space because normally when I'm working double crochets in rows, I don't ever count the chain three as a stitch, but in this pattern I do. So I just need that reminder. You can do this too if you want to, but it's not strictly necessary. So you can skip it if you'd like. After we've chained three and you know put the stitch marker in if you're using one, we're going to turn our work. And then because our chain three counts as our first stitch, 
we're going to skip the stitch in the base of it. So we've got our chain three that is connected to the last stitch of the previous row. We're going to skip that and put our second stitch, which is our first double crochet in stitch number two. Once again, stitch number one is the chain three. Stitch number two is our first double crochet. We're going to continue double crocheting across the row. That was my second last stitch and then our last stitch which for me is stitch number 48 is going to go into where we chained three and that is row two now finished i'm going to continue on and do rows three and four as double crochet rows before i start my mesh panel row but if you would like to customize this you can you can stop at two solid rows you could do six solid rows it's really up to you how you want your top to look but i'll be doing four rows of each to begin row three i'm going to do the same thing i did to start row two chain three one two and three i'm just going to pop my little reminder stitch marker in there turn my work skipping the first stitch where my chain three is and doing my first double crochet, which is also stitch number two in the second. That was my second last stitch, stitch 47. On stitch 48, the last one, we're going to change color. To do that, you're going to start off as normal, yarn over, go into your stitch, yarn over and pull through so you have three loops on your hook you're going to yarn over and pull through just the first two loops but instead of finishing the stitch in white you're going to bring in whatever color you want to use next you're going to line that up behind the head of your hook you're going to yarn over in the new color and pull through the two remaining loops with that now that I've completed four double crochet rows, I'm going to do my mesh rows in my new color, which is pink. I'll be doing a rainbow top and we are working this from the bottom up. So if you plan to do a specific color pattern, know that we're starting at the bottom and working our way towards the top. To start the mesh row, we're going to chain six. I'm going to chain three first, one, two, three so i can put my reminder stitch marker in there and then we're going to chain a further three four five and six you're then going to turn your work and we're going to skip the first three stitches we're going to skip number one number two number three and then in number four we're going to do a double crochet. So again, we've skipped one, two, three, and then in four, we've done a double crochet. We're going to chain three, one, two, and three. We're going to skip three stitches again, one, two, and three, and in the fourth, another double crochet. And this is what we're going to do all the way down our row. And this is also the reason that our original chain needed to be divisible by four, because we're doing this, or we're doing our little mesh squares in groups of four. When you get to the end, our very last stitch should be a double crochet. Just continue chaining three, one, two, and three, skipping three stitches, one, two, three, and doing a double crochet in the fourth. And skipping the final three stitches, double crocheting into my last stitch. 
and that is the first row of our mesh panel finished for the rest of the mesh panel rows we're going to do the same thing we did at the start of this row we're going to chain six and six put you back in here we're going to turn our work and for this first one our double crochet is just going to go into the first double crochet or should I say the second double crochet of the last row go into that double crochet we're going to chain three double crochet into the previous double crochet the next one chain three one two three double crochet into the previous double crochet and once again we're just going to repeat this all the way down the row Now that I've finished the second row of the mesh panel, I'll do two more because I want four solid rows with four mesh rows. I'm making them even. You can do as many mesh rows as you like, same as the solid rows, do as many as you like to whatever pattern you think looks the best. And they're all going to be the same as we've done previously. We're going to start by chaining six, three, four, five, and six. Turning our work, we're going to double crochet into the second double crochet of the previous row. And from here, we just chain three and double crochet into each previous double crochet. I'm about to start the last square on my fourth row of the mesh panel. And I'll be changing back to white at this point. I'll chain three, one, two, and three. I'll do my last double crochet, but like I did when we changed color initially down here, I'm not going to finish the double crochet in the pink. I'll go into the chain, if I can get my hook in there. Oh, finally, that took forever. I've got the three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over, pull through just the first two. I'm going to drop my pink and I'm going to pick my white back up. I didn't cut my white yarn because I prefer to pick it up and I'll just hide this little bit when I stitch all my panels together at the end. But if you would prefer to, you can cut the white yarn and then just bring it back in. But I'll just run it up the side here. I'm going to yarn over in the white and pull through the two remaining loops. Then I can cut the pink and you want to cut enough that you'll be able to either work over it or weave it in or both later on so you can secure those ends. And with the white, this time we only need to chain three. Three, and then we're going to turn our work. The chain three is going to count as our first stitch in the round again. So for double crochets two and three, we're going to crochet them directly into this chain three space. Again, this is stitch one. We're doing stitch number two, and I'm also going to work over this pink end that I just cut. Two, and then double crochet number three into that chain three space. Double crochet number four is going to go into the double crochet of the previous round. Yarn over, go into that double crochet. And there we go, stitch four. From this point, we're going to do three double crochets in each of the chain three spaces with the fourth double crochet into the double crochet of the previous round. That's one. two and three double crochet into the chain three space double crochet number four goes into the double crochet of the previous round again three double crochet in the chain three space two 
and double crochet four in the previous double crochet. Just repeat this all the way down your row and when you get to the end you should still have the same number of stitches that we've had all along. For me that is 48. And then the final double crochet will go into the end of that chain three. And that's how you crochet the row after the last mesh panel row. For me, that is row nine, but depending on how you approach yours, that could be a different row number. For my cardigan, I'm going to continue doing four rows of double crochet interspersed with four mesh panel rows. And we just repeat what we've just done. So I'll be doing three more rows of double crochet and I will crochet them as I did here. I'll be chaining three. Let's do that now. Chaining three. One, two, three. And I'll be popping my reminder stitch marker in, turning my work, skipping the first stitch because my chain three counts as a stitch and then double crocheting my way across starting from the second stitch. And I'll repeat that for three more rows. Then I'll change color exactly like I did here and I'll continue on crocheting my mesh panel. And then I'll just repeat this over and over until the cardigan is the length that I want. And that is all you guys need to do as well. Just repeat what we've already done. And that goes for any panel that you're making, whether it's the sleeve, a large back panel or a large front panel or narrower front panels if you're planning on making a cardigan. The only difference is going to be the initial chain length that we made. Just keep in mind that no matter which piece you're crocheting, the initial chain that you start out with needs to be able to be divided by four. If you don't get that, you're not going to end up with even mesh panels. At this stage, you should have all your panel pieces crocheted. So in my case, I have a large back panel and I have two narrower front panels. Depending on the style you're going for, you may have more or less panels. For example, you could just do two large front and back panels. You could do the all the panels I've done, but also have two sleeve panels. There's really a lot of options here but you want to finish all of those, again, like we've already been over, using the exact same method. So we're just creating rectangles over and over. Once that's done, we're going to take our time to weave in all our ends. I have done so already on the two front panels, but I will need to finish weaving in the ends on this one. I left it because there was a lot more and now I'm regretting that. So I'll have to go and weave in those. When you've finished weaving in all those ends, we're going to assemble our cardigans and that's going to look a little bit different depending on how many panel pieces you made. To begin putting our mesh panel top together, we're going to lay the back panel piece out on a flat surface with the right side facing up. The right side is the good side, the side that will be you know, facing out to the world when you're wearing it. I've marked out all my right sides with a stitch marker just so I remember that this is in fact the right side. Once we've laid that out flat, we're going to bring in our front panels, whether we made one or two. And then we're going to put our right sides together. Here is my stitch marker indicating that this is the right side or the front. I'm going to lay that face down on my back panel and I'm going to line up the edges. So I want the top to align, the stitches of the top to align, and I want the mesh panels and the solid panels to align along the side. And then I'm going to do that with my second front panel. Again, this is the stitch marker indicating that this is the right side. I'm going to line that up along the opposite side of my back panel here. 
stitches of the top aligned, stitches of the side aligned, and I'm having a bit of trouble here because half of the top is falling off my table. But that is the configuration we want. If you only made one large panel piece, you will just line that up with the back panels. So all of the stitches all the way along the top should align and the sides should align as well. When you've got all of that in place, we're going to begin either single crocheting or slip stitching this piece together. Sewing is also an option, but I prefer to crochet this part. We're going to insert our hooks into the end of both the front panel and the back panel. So find the chain three at the end here because our chain three is counted as a stitch in the round. You're going to insert your hook into the front panel. You're going to find the chain three of the last panel as well. And you're going to insert that straight through there. So at this point, I've gone through both my front and my back panels. You're going to bring in your yarn line it up behind your hook, yarn over and pull through. So we're pulling through both the back panel and the front panel. And then we're going to slip stitch to join. You're either going to use slip stitches or single crochet and make your way down both pieces, crocheting them together. I'm going to use slip stitches because I find they're not as bulky. I prefer that to the single crochet. So from this point, we've just joined our yarn. I'm going to jump down to the first double crochet. I'm going to insert my hook into that of the front panel. I'm then going to go straight out of the first double crochet of the back panel. I'm going to yarn over, pull through both the front and the back panel, and then pull straight through the loop on my hook to do a slip stitch. Jumping down to the next stitch, I'm going to go into the double crochet of the front, out of the double crochet of the back, and slip stitch into the front panel, out of the back panel and slip stitch. And like this, I'm going to slip stitch all the way across my first front panel here. So when I get to the end of that, which is this point, I will stop. If you've got a large front panel piece, so your front panel piece is the same size as your back panel piece, you will need to stop as well because you will need to leave room for your head. So you will need to figure out where you need to stop. Maybe put in a, a stitch marker on either side just as a reminder. Once we've done this side, we will come back and do the other side as well. But let's just finish off this first. And that was my last stitch at the front. So I'm going to cut a yarn tail. This just needs to be long enough that we can weave it into the stitches later and secure it. Then pull up with your hook. And at this point, we're going to bring in our second panel. Again, we want the right sides together. So my little stitch marker facing downwards. We're going to line up the corners. And I think I'll flip this over because that might make it a little bit easier for me. And we're going to repeat the entire process. Go into the chain at the end here, then into the chain of the piece at the back. Bring in your yarn, yarn over, pull through, and then slip stitch to join. Like we did with the first panel piece, we're just going to slip stitch our way all the way across until we reach the end of this panel here. Or if you've got two large pieces, slip stitch up until you reach the point where your neckline starts. Snip that, pull up with your hook, and that is our panel pieces joined at the shoulder. So let me open this out. Our next step is going to be to slip stitch single crochet or so the sides together. However, if you crocheted sleeves for your cardigan here, you will need to attach those first. You're going to take the middle of those sleeves at the shoulder and you're going to line it up with the join and then you'll single crochet slip stitch. So 
from that point to this point attaching the sleeves. I'm not going to go over it here because I don't have sleeves in this cardigan. I intend to crochet them on directly to the cardigan sides itself. If you would like a more detailed tutorial on how to attach sleeves in this manner, I will put a link down in the description for my butterfly howry or butterfly cardigan I did a little while ago because that does go over how to assemble sleeves when you start out with the five panel pieces like this. So hop over there if you need those instructions first and then come back here and we're going to join the sides of our cardigan. For those of us who don't have sleeves that just means we're going to line up the sides so make sure all our mesh panels are lined up and our solid panels are lined up we're going to start at the end and do what we did last time, work into the end chain of the back piece, then out of the end chain of the front piece. We're going to bring in our yarn again, line it up, yarn over, pull through, and then slip stitch to join. Because we use double crochet in this pattern, I'm going to put in two slip stitches. for every chain at the end. So I've done one to join here. I'm going to go into that same chain and do a second slip stitch. I'll then jump up to the end chain of the next row, go into there, out of the, again, next chain up of the second row of my front panel, slip stitch. I'm going back into that same space, the same chain on each piece. And I'm going to do my second slip stitch so we're going to make our way all the way up our piece, slip stitching or single crocheting together. However, when we get closer to the top, we're going to need to leave space for our arm. We need an armhole here. You can decide where you want that to start or stop. I'm probably going to go up to the blue stitches. So I'm going to leave this section here as my armhole. But if you want a tighter sleeve, you can go up further. If you want a looser sleeve, you can stop further down. It's really up to you, your size and your clothing preferences. So let's go back to the bottom section here and continue slip stitching our way up. When we come up against the mesh panels, you have a couple of options. You can continue single crocheting in whatever color you happen to be using at the moment, or you can swap to the corresponding color. I'm probably going to do that just so the join doesn't stand out too much. So what we'll have to do on our last stitch in the solid panel, you will go into your stitch, yarn over and pull through, and then bring in whatever color you happen to use for your mesh panel. Line that up behind the loops on your hook, yarn over in the new color and pull through. And then I'm going to do the same thing I've been doing for my solid rows here. In the end, I'm going to put two single crochet or two slip stitches to each mesh panel because I've still got chain threes here. I'm going to go into mesh panel, first single crochet. And I'm working over both tail ends, as well as the bit of white yarn that I carried from solid panel to solid panel. So I'm just working over those to hide them. And two. And then we're going to jump up to the next square in our mesh panels. I'm going to go in and do one and two single crochet. Jump up to the third square one and two and then finally the fourth square i'm going to do my first single crochet but on the second i'm going to change color go into the square yarn over pull through bring the white yarn back in yarn over with the white pull through with that and there we've changed back to our solid color i'm going to continue putting two single crochet in at the end of each solid row when I get to here, I'm going to swap color again, continuing to put two single crochet in each square of the mesh panel, continue on to the next solid one, so on and so forth, until I reach the point where I want my armhole to start. Again, for me, that's going to be 
at the edge of the blue panel here. And this is the point that I'm going to stop at. So I've left my armhole open here. I'll just cut myself a yarn tail. Again, this needs to be long enough that you can weave it in. Snip. And then we're going to repeat the entire process on the other side. Make sure that your pieces are right sides together. Let me just flip this over. Oops, knock everything off the table while I'm at it. And we're going to line up the solid panels, line up the mesh panels, join our yarn. And then make your way down the piece in the same manner that we did before, swapping colour if you need to and stopping at your designated armhole spot. Now that our sides are both joined together, I've joined this side, I've joined this side, we're going to turn our cardigan the right way out so the seams that we've just created by joining all the pieces both the sides and at the shoulder they will now be on the inside so let's turn that the right way out and the first thing we're going to do I did not do that right hang on there we go and the first thing we're going to do is add the sleeves. If you already attached your sleeves, you crocheted them separately and then you stitched them in, you can skip this part. But for those of us who didn't do that, we're going to find one of our armholes and we're going to join our yarn. And I like to join at the seam here, so where the front panel meets the back panel. So I'm going to push my hook into the join there. I'm going to bring in my yarn and I'll join it the same way I've done previously. I will line it up behind my hook, yarn over, pull through and then slip stitch. And after we've joined our yarn, there's a couple of things you can do. One, you can crochet in continuous rows and just keep crocheting out until your sleeves reach you know, a desired length, whatever that happens to be for you. Or, and this is what I'm going to do, you can add some ribbing. And to do the ribbing, we're not going to be crocheting in the round. We are instead going to begin chaining. The number you chain is going to determine how wide your ribbing is. I don't want my ribbing to be very wide at all. So I'm probably just going to chain six. And six. And you know what? That's probably even a bit too long. I'm going to take out two. So I've chained four at this point. Four. So chain however many or however few you want. And then we're going to start in the second chain from the hook and single crochet our way back down the chain. Again, I've chained four, so that means I'm going to do three single crochet starting in the second chain from the hook. And three. And when we've finished those three single crochet or however many single crochet that you did in your pattern, we're going to single crochet across the body of the armhole, so across this section here. We're going to do two single crochet here, and because I join my yarn at the seam where the front and the back meet, that means those first two single crochet are going to go into the first square of my blue mesh panel here. One single crochet into there, and then go back into that same square for a second. After this, I will rotate my work I'm going to skip the two single crochet I just did and I'm going to work into the back loops of the three single crochet I did down my chain. So skipping the two single crochet, I'm going to go into the first back loop of the third single crochet that I did and I will single crochet into there. I'm going to go into the back loop of the second stitch single crochet and then into the back loop of the third and single crochet. So I've worked my way back up the original chain that I did. I will then chain one and rotate my work again. 
Once more working in the back loop only, I'm going to do three single crochet down my work here. One, two, and three. And this number of single crochet should remain consistent with whatever the number was you started out with. So if you did start with say six chains and worked five single crochet back down the chain, you should be doing five single crochet each time. If you did, I don't know, 10 single crochet, you should be doing 10 single crochet up and back each time. But once we reach the bottom again, we're going to do two more single crochet across our armhole, which are going to be placed in our second mesh square here. And we're going to do, oh, my hook keeps getting caught in all the mesh panels. We're going to do one and two single crochet into that square. There they are, two single crochet. We're going to rotate our work. We're going to skip those two single crochet we just did. And we're going to go into the back loops and single crochet our way back up the chain. In my case, I'm still doing three single crochet, but you may be doing more or less depending on how many you chained originally. And like I said before, you just need to keep that number consistent. So chain, turn, into the back loop, I'm going to work down my chain. One, two, and three stitches. Two single crochet across the armhole, which is our third mesh uh, square, that's the word. <laughs> third mesh square here. One, and two. Rotate, skipping the two single crochet and then I'm going to work three single crochet into the back loop up my chain. Two and three. And from here, we're just going to repeat this process over and over until we work our way all the way around the armhole and we end up back to the start where we joined our yarn. When we get to the solid rows here, we're going to do the same thing into the chains at the ends of those as we did for the mesh square panels. We're going to put two single crochet in at the end of each of those, skipping them when we work back up our chain. After you've crocheted all that ribbing around the armhole, and you're back to the start, you want to make sure you finish at the top of your chain. Let's zoom in once again. When you do that, we're going to finish off. We will chain one again and rotate our work. We're still going to work into the back loop of the second stitch from the hook, but instead of single crocheting here, we're going to work into the front loop of the first stitch of our original chain. So we've gone into the stitch here, we're going to go into the corresponding stitch here, and we're going to slip stitch to join. We're going to jump down one stitch, go into the back loop, go into the corresponding front loop on the starting chain, and slip stitch. And for me, this will be my last joining stitch. Go into the back loop, into the corresponding stitch of the original chain and slip stitch. If you did more stitches than I did, you will just keep slip stitching your way down until your entire ribbing is joined together. Cut a yarn tail so we can weave this in. Pull up with my hook. And that is our ribbing done on one sleeve. We are now going to repeat the entire process on the second sleeve. I'll join my yarn to the underarm section here where my front and back panel meet, bring in my yarn, then slip stitch to join, and then chain the same amount you chained for the first sleeve. In my case, that's going to be four, one, two, three, and four and then repeat the entire ribbing process around this second sleeve.
That is our second sleeve taken care of. Sleeve one and then sleeve two. After we finish those, we're going to add the ribbing to the bottom. And we're going to join our yarn to the end of one of the front panels. We're going to work our way across that front panel, then across the back panel, and then finally across the second front panel. If you did two large panel pieces instead and you don't have this gap in the middle, you will do the ribbing here like you did for the armhole, just work your way all the way around. But for my open cardi, we're going to work end to end. Join your yarn the same way that we've been doing previously. So insert your hook into the last chain, yarn over, pull through and then slip stitch. And this time I want my ribbing to be a little bit taller. So I'm probably going to chain six here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That will mean I need to work five single crochet down my chain. And we are going to be doing the exact same thing here that we did for the armholes. The only difference being the number of chains that we start out with initially. So I started with six this time instead of four. And there's my... And there's my fifth single crochet down the chain. I'm then going to do my two stitches across the front panel. And then we're going to work back up the chain after we skip those two stitches that we did. And I'll work five back up my chain. So just repeat this over and over. Again, it's the same thing we did for the armholes. When you finally reach the end of the piece, if you are making a closed piece, so you have one large back and front panel, and you'd like to join those two ends together, you're going to do that the same way that we joined the armholes over here, exact same way. There may just be a couple of additional slip stitches if you made your chain longer. But in my case, because I have an open cardigan, we're going to leave our hooks in. We're not cutting the yarn just yet. And from this point where we finished, we're going to begin working up the sides, creating the ribbing for the inner section of the cardigan. So I'll be working up the side of the front panel, all the way to the top. We're a bit tangled here. Then across the neckline, or the gap between the first front panel and the second front panel on the back panel here. Then we're going to make our way back down the other back panel and finish on the opposite side. So the same rule applies here. We're going to chain however many we'd like to make the ribbing as tall as we want it to be. In my case, I don't want this to be very wide at all. In fact, it's going to be shorter than even my armhole ribbing. In that case, I'm only going to chain three. One, two and three we're going to be doing the same thing again starting in the second chain from the hook you want to work back down your chain and i'm going to do one and two single crochet for this first little bit we'll be working across the ribbing that we've just made but then we're going to be working across the stitches of our mesh panel shirt and we're just going to make our way all the way around the inner section of the cardigan And that is all my ribbing finished. So what I will do now is take a moment to weave in all these ends that I have left over from all my ribbings at the armholes, at the waistband, and then 
up around the inside of the cardigan. So I might start from the bottom and work my way up. And there we go, mesh panel top all complete. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I do hope it wasn't too difficult to follow along with. As I mentioned in the intro, I'm sort of new at trying my hand at crocheting clothing and making tutorials for those clothes. So if you do have any constructive criticism, please do put it in the comments because it is something that I would like to improve upon. I'm enjoying playing around with clothing design, so I would like to share more in the future. For now, if you do end up making yourself a version of a mesh panel top, feel free to share it with me over on Instagram or TikTok. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you all next week with another video.